peace to all of you um, during this crisis where a lot of us are, are, are full of anxiety. We are anxious, we're nervous, we don't know what's going on, we don't know how to respond to things. And so what we've done is, especially as a spiritual community, um, have reached out to some very spiritual people, asking their opinions on, on how to approach fear, um, especially in light of COVID-19, the coronavirus, and how each of the next few months, uh, maybe years, how, we, how can we look forward um, and inward and upward? And so I've asked uh, my four friends, as you'll see, um, their opinions on these things, to share their, their pearls of wisdom, if you will. Um, I, so as I speak with Larisha Hawkins, you'll, you'll get to hear her story, and then, and then I'll, I'll, I'll speak with Shane Claiborne, and, and he'll, he'll share more about what he's feeling and thinking right now. And then you'll hear from uh, Jai uh, Utal, who, who shares his story and uh, how he's personally dealing with things. And then we'll hear from Sam Garrett, and he'll close us out with some wonderful music too, as he shares from his heart today. So this is part one of our series, Dealing with Fear. Parts of the American healthcare system are already overwhelmed. According to John Hopkins University, there are now more than 83,000 confirmed cases in the U.S. That is the war most in the world. Well, it's great to have you here. What a privilege. And what a, what strange times. You were just here in Lynchburg and you were lecturing in my, in my own class at the University of Lynchburg, where I teach as well. And you were and you were sharing, um, oh, you, you, were, you were kind of diving into already some of the fear uh, issues that we have in society, things that you're well aware of. And, and just to recap for my, my community and anybody watching that Larisha Hawkins is well known for um, doing something that many of us would find terrifying, and that's standing in solidarity uh, with with another people group that that maybe basically isn't your people group, but you you take on um, their their um, um, their their voice, you you help uh, amplify their who they are, and and you express it by by standing with them, and that's what Larisha did in 2015. If 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 everyone. Uh, here doesn't know she she uh, as a Christian uh, professor uh, of color at Wheaton College female I mean all those things she she already uh, identified in her life and then and then when she um, uh, donned the hijab or the headscarf um, with Muslim women around the world during the season of Advent which of course is a season that we celebrate the coming of the of peace and um, coming of love and compassion and all of those things that are, that we believe Jesus embodies. Larisha did that in the donning of the hijab and standing in solidarity with Muslim women, which ended up in the end being controversial. I know for some of us, it's strange to think of that as a controversy, but it was for uh, her, her uh, college and of course for other Christians uh, around the country. And it's, it's, it's odd for me to think that that was something that would eventually leave her uh, separating employment with Wheaton College, but that's what happened. Larisha, you have lived through it, and you have lived through just just donning a hijab as a Christian. Um, you've lived through some of the craziest times, I'm sure, in your life, where it costs you everything just to stand side by side with people. And and the mantra or the phrase that's used over and over is "Same God," and that was controversial. Um, now, I'm not wanting you to relitigate all those things for us, but but I, I am interested in how you, as a person who has made a choice to stand with others are seeing the coronavirus and, and all of us finding ourselves in isolation where we're, we're afraid, we're scared, we're confused. Um, and religions, religious people all around the world are crying out to God for help. And now we're coming to you, the person who um, stood up for same God. And maybe you could give us a little bit of what of what we can do um, as, as, a, uh, as a community. Um, so if you could share with us a little bit, that would be great. Yeah. I think one of the um, important facets of um, what some people have called activism, my activism in, in solidarity with Muslim women, which I called embodied solidarity. Um, one of the most important facets is that um, the ways that I, as a, I'm a professor of politics and, and religion and race um, think about my own professional commitment, my own personal um, 
Christian spiritual motivation is that it always has to be embodied. Um, I think as someone who is prone to, to intellectualism and intellectualism and being in my head, um, I came naturally by disassociating myself from my body. Um, the material being um, vessel that I inhabit. And it was really in graduate school and when I began, became a professor, that I started thinking a lot about, well, what does it mean to be embodied? I'm not just a head. I'm, I'm not someone who runs in the morning for work, goes to work and uses this, you know, noggin up here, um, reacts in my heart at lunch when I hear what my students are struggling with over lunch, goes home exhausted, um, disconnects watching Star Trek The Next Generation and gets up and does it all over again, right? Um, and so I thought, I have to be an embodied vulnerable human to my students and that's what I want to model in both my teaching and in my relationships. And so that also has to be integrated in my pedagogy, what we call how we teach. So embodied solidarity goes back to my teaching, averring that Christians and Muslims and Jews worship the same God it seemed like a no-brainer to me, but it was controversial and caused people to draw lines in the sand. Um, and all I was trying to say is whoever we are, wherever we come from, what, whether we have a spiritual background or not, um, we're on this planet together. Um, the universe is one. If there is a God, there's only one. <laughs> um, and what does that mean? And what it means, according to, you know, the Jesus of the Sermon on the Mount and the prophets that preceded that Jesus, um, is that we speak truth to power in an embodied way um, that may involve um, some level of risk. Um, the risk varies. Um, the ultimate risk is death. Um, the risk could be social alienation. It could be economic alienation. It could be physical, um, kind of geographic alienation. Um, but we do these things. These things have to be motivated by something inside of you, right? And so when I, and as I think about the moment that we're in, I think what this moment proves is what's deep inside of you and what comes out in those moments of crisis and trial when your job is on the line because of something you did. If you didn't believe it to begin with, like, that's going to be proven in the moment during the fire, right? Um, so I'll start off with a broad statement. I don't think the coronavirus crisis is going to change many people. I think it's going to prove who people are. Um, it's going to prove what's deep within. Um, it's not going to solve our political problems. There's not going to all of a sudden be um, some kind of um, bipartisan moment and all of our political crises and issues are going to be um, in a moment solved. Um, keep paying attention because all the stuff below the surface is, is, is continuing, right? All the fights below. People are just kind of trying to sneak stuff through that they want each side. Um, I think that this is just going to prove more of who we are within. And so as I think about the moment that we're in, Yes, there's more time for self-examination and there's also more time for people to do more of what they were already doing, um, avoiding the vulnerable. New York's hospitals are already past the breaking point. 9-11 was nothing compared to this. They just keep coming. And they're all ages. Don't delude yourself into thinking only the old will die. Doctors and nurses overcome by the sheer number of coronavirus patients as the epidemic ravages America's largest city. Shane, welcome. Yeah, man, it's great to be here. Thanks for inviting me. And Shane, you, you guys are up in Pennsylvania. I think you're on lockdown too, right? Uh, I think it's, it's not really as strict here. I think we're supposed to stay inside, but uh, I mean, we're still, we have a lot going on in our neighborhood, so we're, we're uh, you know, still sharing food with a lot of folks. We're going to be having a gardening day. Uh, you know, we're, we got a lot going on, but we're trying to be both uh, uh, precaution, use precaution and courage, you know, uh, to have courage and precaution, I think is how we've been saying it. 
No, that's that's uh, that's encouraging to hear that you found a way to still maintain community uh, despite what's happening. And I think a lot of us are dealing with a bit of anxiety. Um, a lot of us are having to search deep within and, and try to figure out what those most important things are that we require as human, as spiritual human beings that, that long for connection with God and with each other. And so someone like yourself, Shane, who has spent your life, you know, um, being a great, I think, voice for many of us to, to listen to and understand wisdom of what it means to walk like Jesus and to live like Jesus in community, what, what are some of your thoughts around how, we're, how we could approach our own fears and what we could be doing uh, during this coronavirus uh, pandemic? Yeah, well, first of all, I, I think that we uh, need to cling to that wonderful scripture that perfect love casteth out fear. And I, I'm convinced that fear and love are enemies. You know, we sometimes think that the opposite of love is hate, but I'm I'm kind of wondering if the opposite of love isn't fear sometimes, you know, and because they, they feel like sort of opposing magnets uh, that, you know, fear casts out love and love casts out fear. And we see that, you know, all over our country manifesting itself in different ways. And I, I think Corona, the, the you know, COVID-19 coronavirus is just the latest um, kind of test of that for us. Um, and um so we can see throughout history, and I mean, I think in a lot of the current policies here in the U.S., what a country looks like when it's really held captive to fear, and where fear rather than love is the uh, kind of compelling force behind so many of our policies, and um, from how we think about guns to how we think about the military. I mean, we have the the most massive, you know, weaponry in the world. And um, so you look at Jesus in contrast to that, <laughs> you know, and I, I think that, you know, we wrote this, this book called Beating Guns, uh, challenging, you know, the way that we think about guns and the idolatry, I think, of our weaponry. And, um, uh, but you, you look at the cross and the gun or the bomb and they give you very different versions of what power looks like. And, and one says that, you know, we are willing to kill and the other says we are willing to die and, and that love even extends to our enemies. The frustrating thing about all of this is it really just feels like it's too little too late. Like we knew, we knew it was coming. At other hospitals, nurses wear garbage bags as gowns as supplies of protective equipment run low. All in our homes, but we're also, I think, dealing with fear and, and, and being afraid. And so, Jai, please, if you can speak and share a little bit about some of the things that you're working through as you're thinking through this. Yeah, um, well, thank, thank you, first of all, for that beautiful introduction. I try my best. Um, you know, the, the fear is a real thing, and, and I'm in one of the vulner, vulnerable groups, um, almost 70, and with, I've had asthma and lung problems my whole life. And so, so all, all of the, the things that people are feeling, believe me, I'm feeling them too. You know, uh, my, my inner, inner landscape changes moment to moment from you know being very contented at home with my family just you know close and sitting watching tv and being feeling really sweet and you know good good vibes and then like the next moment i start sweating and the terror of what the, the feels like this impending plague not even impending you know and and i start feeling you know there's days that i in normal life i don't go outside i like it inside but knowing that I can't go outside. There's moments that I start freaking out. So I am no more adept at this challenge than anyone else. I, I just want to say that. Um, but because we have to, we have to try to have different perspectives. Not because we want to, but we're, you know, like it's a, it's a, it's a no brainer. We're, we're being forced to challenge ourselves and to find some deeper rooms within um, his castle in our hearts. You know, so 
as we were mentioning before you pressed record, one of them that seems very clear to me, it doesn't necessarily put me more at ease in my own troubled waters, but it seems clear that, that this phenomena, the, cor the coronavirus is, is the, the great mother, the mother earth, the she, um, uh, cleansing and, and, you know, maybe just on, for her own personal, uh, uh, you know, pleasure, having a break, taking a break. The air is so clean. There's, there's hardly any cars on the road. The factories are shut down. And, and you know, for this brief time uh, on the whole planet, there's a great, great, great clearing of, of pollution. And, you know, that's something amazing that we humans would not have done on our own. I mean, you know, I, I consider myself very conscious of uh, recycling, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. But I, for my work, I go on airplanes. Airplanes are one of the worst pollutants around. And it's so, it's kind of wonderful to think of Mother Earth uh, creating this cleanse, for lack of a better word. You know, but then on the other hand, uh, people who are, have, been researching and studying climate change for years and years and years have predicted that that new viruses would come and and uh, be very very difficult so the other thing or one other thing that that i i've been really trying to find in myself but also share with other people is is that since we're distanced from each other physically you know, it's a time to reach out way, way more even than normally with our hearts and our souls to connect with other people, whether that's a phone call. I, I, I need to be doing more of my phone call because there's some friends that are, that are quite alone and I have to con connect with them. But it's also for just with things that like you and I are doing right now, you know, bearing our souls and, and, and and sharing our hearts with others. With Corona, that's that's the coronavirus that's kind of um, put us into our, we've hunkered down. We're, we, we've gone into our own homes and hobbles and, and crevices in the earth, and we're trying to protect ourselves uh, from the virus. What, what, and we're afraid, and there's so many of us, I think, that are, are so afraid right now. And, um, and we're looking, I mean, a lot of us are in an introspective state that we haven't been in a long time. I think people around the world are experiencing something very unique that has never happened before because we've never had this level of communication and community given even how uh, di divisive everything is within our, within us, you know, there's schisms everywhere, but how how can we look at fear and and how can we how can we find solace in in the pain uh, and and that's why i'm kind of looking at you as a and, and then i'm hoping you would shift to share a little, little bit of that music the things that you are so good about doing and bringing us through that introspective state so to you my brother mm. yeah for me it's a very interesting time you know we um i feel like life brings us these you know challenges or obstacles in order to transcend and um, as you say it's a very introspective time you know we're not going out we're not like doing so many things so it's really like where else are we gonna go other than within and um, I feel that it you know for myself I'm, I'm using it as a beautiful opportunity um, right now, I was supposed to be in Portugal with my, my guru, my teacher, Muji, and my daughter, who just turned four years old. She lives there with her mum. So I was also meant to be uh, be there right now. And I, I had to surrender to not being there, you know. I, I've just spent a few months in California and was very much looking forward to coming home and then going back to Portugal and being there. And I kind of caught myself in this place of like, you know, this kind of inner no, this inner resistance towards uh, this situation. And um, what I've learned from that is actually whenever we resist life, we are doing a disservice to ourselves. 
we can overcome these things, you know, and the best thing that we can do in this time for ourselves and others is to really look inside of our own heart and to spend this time in introspection and in, in reflection, meditation, contemplation, and to, um, to be grateful also to practice gratitude, grateful for those that we have in our lives that inspire us, that we love and, and grateful for this time also because it means that we we can be introspective maybe usually we're working we're doing different things we have so many things so many obligations and maybe this is a time for us to just stop and as we stop maybe things will be revealed to us that otherwise would not have been so um yeah oh, that is beautiful sam thank you sam would you would you grace us with a gift of music just a little bit yeah. if you're able yeah, I would love that. I would love that so much to have my guitar right here. Um, I would love to play a song. It's a, it's a new song, a relatively new song. It's a song called Nearer Than Near. And um, yeah, I think you will enjoy it. It goes like this. <laughs> Oh my darling, won't you sing a 
Receive the love we be walking through the valley of the shadow of belief. Let us, oh good children, be the change we wish to see. Hallelujah to the fire, bringing forth the ancient seeds. It's more than we imagine, and beyond what we can see. Ooh, oh, oh. It's nearer than the Oh, it's nearer than near. Oh, oh, it's nearer than near. Hey, yeah, hey, yeah. It's nearer than near. Hey, yeah, hey, yeah. It's nearer than near. Hey, yeah, hey, yeah. Nearer than near. Hey, yeah, hey, yeah. Open up your eyes and raise your hands Today it is the day to dance your dance Oh, eternity is a certainty of labor Deeper than the trees, more than all 
the motion, still enough into the breeze. If truth is what we're seeking, and if truth is what we need, then let our eyes be open to receive the love we be. Walking through the shadows of the valley of belief, well, let us all, good children, be the change we wish to see. Hallelujah to the fire, bringing forth the ancient seeds. More than we imagine and beyond what we conceive. Ooh.